Welcome back. The earthquakes of 2010 and 2011 had enormous impacts on the eastern suburbs of Christchurch. Because of the severe land damage, the government red zoned almost 6,000 properties along the Lower Avon. Most of the residents have now left their homes. The houses have been demolished and the land cleared. The red zoning process saw whole suburbs gradually dissolve away and others split into two, half red zone and half green zone. It hasn't been easy for families in either situation, especially where the zone boundary went straight down the middle of a residential street. Such was the situation in Woodchester Ave in Richmond. Our side of the street is the green side, um, over the road is the red side. Personally speaking, uh, my family, we came off pretty lightly. Neighbour one side is a rebuild, uh, neighbour the other side has, they've had the work completed recently. Some of the neighbours moved away pretty quickly, some obviously fighting their insurers. One of our neighbours over the street had lived in the house for 30, 40 years, you know, that was where he was going to stay until, you know, they passed on. So. Um, to be forced, to have your hand forced and to move away must have been awful, you know. It was a much better street with it before the earthquake, there's no doubt, doubt about it, because there's more people, um, there's more life. Um, after the earthquakes, half the street's gone, the community spirit is still there, but there's all these sort of new um, issues that have arisen since the quakes, but have brought the neighbours together to try and resolve those issues. So um, it's a different sort of feeling. It's not as, you know, happy-go-lucky as it was. Perhaps we'd have barbecues and a bit more fun. And now, you know, now it's all a bit serious and, you know, has adverse um, financial implications on our property. I joked with the neighbours over the, over the road about, you know, oh, it would be quite nice if you all left so I could have a, have a river view. You know, in hindsight, you know, I think I prefer the neighbours. It's just very different. It's not what we bought. You know, we bought, we wanted to have our family brought up in a community with other families and now, you know, it doesn't happen, so. What would you like to see happen in the residential red zone? In an ideal world, uh, it would be a park or, you know, even floodplain, you know, it could be used in such a positive environmental way. But generally, you know, governments are so short-sighted and they're, they're after the, they're all, it's all about the bottom line. It would have massive, uh, positive benefits for our family, um, absolutely. Uh, um, it's, it's, just, it's a bit difficult to see that happening when we're still surrounded by broken streets and live cables dangling from, you know, power lines and, you know, graffiti and broken glass everywhere. So it's quite difficult to see that, but, um, you know, if it, if it does happen, then it would be amazing. So whether people ended up red or green zoned in the east, life has been difficult. Yet there is still a lot of keen interest in the future of the red zone lands. And the Crown as the owner, the government, has yet to make any decision regarding its future use. But they have started to signal their intentions on the priorities and the processes that they may follow in making those decisions. In April last year, the Prime Minister was in Christchurch to announce those intentions at a breakfast hosted by the Canterbury Employers Chamber of Commerce. And here is what he had to say. While the land is severely damaged, that doesn't mean we can't devise new ways to use it. We want to hear from the people of Christchurch and Kaiapoi what they want to see happen to this land, whether this is parks, playing fields, cycleways or other innovative ideas. So there is a clear intention here to consult with the communities of Greater Christchurch on the red zone future use. This is borne out by the released cabinet papers which identify four key priorities for the recovery of the red zones. That infrastructure needs to be provided for. That public participation in determining the future use is encouraged and enabled. That amenity values are achieved. And that options that offer a financial return for the government are left open. We'll refer to these priorities from time to time throughout the series. The Prime Minister's announcement was well over a year ago now, so what has happened since? 
Well, not a great deal when it comes to the Christchurch Red Zone lands. But there was a Red Zone future use consultation exercise carried out in 2014 in the Waimakariri district. And that gives us some pointers on what we can expect in Christchurch. I went out to Kaipoi to ask Simon Markham from the Waimakariri District Council to tell us about the Waimakariri consultation. There were 1,100 properties in the red zone spread across the Kaipoi, the Pines Beach and the Kairaki communities. So some quite different red zone areas and that's one thing to be really aware of, uh, including in Christchurch. Tell us about the consultation Sarah undertook for the Waimakariri red zone last year. That was uh, June, July, August last year and that was a preliminary consultation phase at, at a very ideas level. I guess there were two sides to that in terms of the actual consultation. One was about activating the issue again through the media, online uh, and uh, letterbox drops to all of the Waimakariri community households and the second part of that was then opportunities for people to share views about future use through online and then through meetings and, uh, and, and in writing. Two quite simple questions. What's important to you? Uh, what are the values that are important? And the second, what are some of the ideas about how that land should be used in the future? So in terms of um, values, um, uh, ideas around community and family and nature and uh, reflection were really important. Uh, about just under half of the ideas focused on various aspects of recreation. So that was parks and walking and biking and dog, uh, uh, dog parks and playgrounds, so really opportunities for people. 20% uh, focused on environment and, uh, and that was really trees, native vegetation, regeneration, and those sorts of ideas. Interestingly, uh, a similar proportion, about one in five ideas around business from the point of view of markets and the opportunity for red zone future use to assist um, in uh, recovery of the town centre. I think there's merit in starting wide, not being predetermining, but being now informed about land capability. There was a strong um, similarity of views about nat nature and natural use and recreation, but the area where views differed most, and probably the only area that was really, there were really divergent views, while some people said never rebuild uh, residential use on this land, and others said, yes, uh, let, let, let's consider that. And, and these weren't large numbers of, of the respondents that were participating giving feedback. We need to uh, appreciate that uh, the wider community comes at this from at different levels. There are the immediate adjoining neighbours who are permanent residents nearby so they will have particularly uh, important issues from their point of view. There'll be the whole Christchurch wider community who may not now after these the time has passed be quite as aware of the extent and nature of the red zone so we've got to be finding a good balance between uh, the long-term potential but equally finding some projects that can be decided and got on with quickly because part of recovery is progress on red zone use, both short, medium and long term. Well that progress is still nowhere in sight for Christchurch and there has been no further follow-up consultation yet in the Waimakariri. The main reason for the delays, according to the government, is the Supreme Court decision regarding the Quake Outcast case that has had wide-ranging implications. These have highlighted a legal requirement for the development of recovery plans on any matters relating to the residential red zone, including residual settlement offers and future use. Such plans are required to be consulted on before any implementation. And at present, there is no draft recovery plan relating to the processes of the future use of the residential red zone lands. And that is still likely to be several weeks or months away yet. However, members of the community have not waited for the government to take the lead in this. Eastern Vision, a group of local community leaders, has taken the bull by the horns and already undertaken a community engagement exercise that covers the whole of the eastern flatlands, not just the residential red zone. 
and that includes many of the proposals for the recovery of the east that have been suggested by the communities over the last few years. Coming up, we speak to Evan Smith of Eastern Vision about this consultation.